Well, hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Jimmy Reyes and I'm a professional comic book inker. You may recognize my work over superstar artist David Finch. And most recently, I've worked with internet artist ZHC. Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I ink rock texture, not using a 102 crow quill or using a brush. Uh, I use something else. So let's go ahead and take a look and uh, see what it is that I use. Welcome to my channel where I share tips, techniques, and an inside look at my inking process. I'd like to start this video off by thanking artist Brett Booth, who provided the artwork um, that I'm using for this example. Uh, I'm actually inking this for uh, my portfolio. Every Saturday he has a, a sketch that he does, and uh, he does different uh, types of characters, and, and each piece is available uh, for purchase um, off his Twitter feed you can always uh, buy it there so for this video I figured I would show how I ink rocks uh, when you ink rocks I mean not only uh, am I going to discuss the type of uh, thought that goes behind it and type of technique but I'm also going to discuss the type of tool that I'm using so if you're familiar with nib there are various types of nibs the main nib that inkers use for comic books is a 102 crow quill um, the nib that I use is by speedball uh, there is also the Japanese version of um, a nib that's very popular, the G-Pin, um, that some uh, American inkers will use. Uh, but mostly that's uh, for uh, manga style and Japanese artists. But you can use just about any type of nib that you want to ink a comic book page. It's just a, up to you on uh, the type of look that you want. Uh, it's, it's on how you control the tool, how you manipulate the tool, and... and uh, the type of line work that you're looking for. So in this case here, I'm using a 108, and the 108 is also by Speedball. And uh, the reason that I'm using this is that it uh, is much more flexible. Um, I know that artists will mention that the 102 is very flexible. And it's not literally flexible, where it actually bends like a brush. Um, and if you're unfamiliar how a nib works, I do have a video in my channel, uh, The History of the 102 Crow Quill, which discusses the, the parts and the sections of the nib and how the nib works. Um, so if you haven't seen that, it's a good video to watch. So for the 108, since the 108 will then split um, and, and scissors on the tip, um, and the, the 108 is much longer on the tip that it, it holds more ink and it then is able to spread more ink uh, quicker than the 102. With the 102 I have to draw um, holding lines which are the outline of the shape that I want to fill. So I would have to draw in a, a little square and then fill it in with the 102. With the 108 I can fill it in much faster and it gives me these little like ink blobs and um, different type of line work and it also gives me a very tiny hair like lines, um, very fine lines. As long as you're very gentle and light with the 108. If you're familiar with a the brush, then transitioning to a 108 may be easier for you uh, because it, it does feel a bit more like a brush. Um, of course, nothing else really feels like a brush other than an, an actual brush, but uh, this is, you know, as far as nibs go, this is pretty close uh, to the brush feel. So as long as your hand is very light and you're very gentle with it, you can really control the lines. Um, and this is actually the nib where I actually apply pressure to get a, a thicker, wider line. Whereas with my 102, I don't really apply pressure. I, I'm really a sculptor with that. I, and, and by that, I mean I actually sculpt my lines. I, I throw it on a, a, a quick, thin line, and then I throw another quick, thin line right next to it and build up that line. Or I shape the line, as I mentioned before, by drawing in a, a square or a triangle or whatever shape, and then I fill that in black. And that does take more time so that's for the smaller shapes but generally to go in and do really quick work I will use the 108 um, for rocks and this video has not been sped up it's actually in real time and it's it's still a short video because I, I figured there's not a whole lot of detail behind it really it's it is very simple um, really where the time that it's going to take you is is learning how to use the 108 in game control that's where you're really going to want to practice but as far as explaining how to do it uh, it's really not that difficult uh, so 
I kind of speed through some of my line work because uh, the, the rock look isn't supposed to be extremely neat. Uh, you do want some lines to uh, be thick, some lines to be thin, and then you want white space. You want to break up the solid black. Now in this case, as I mentioned, the penciler is Brett Booth, and uh, Brett Booth is a veteran. He's been in the industry for quite a long time, so the lines that he lays down, I mean, he, he knows how to create shapes. You know, he knows how to add textures. So you, you don't really want to deviate from what the artist plays down, but you do want to enhance it. So when I'm inking those black areas that he shades in, I approach it as it's a notation from Brett Booth, you know, to say, hey, this is a rock texture and I want rock texture here. So I don't have to follow that solid black exactly. And the reason that I'm not filling in that black completely solid black is because a rock texture as, um, has multi levels and it isn't a flat surface and when the light touches down onto the surface that of the rock that is closer to the light it will then reflect the light and the areas that uh, are concave that go inward or that are not touching the light will then be in shadow so there are going to be different levels of it and so i break up that black uh, really i break it up randomly really to be honest um, it's not necessarily a, a pattern a lot of textures are just that a, a texture is really just a pattern but this one here is a bit more um it's a bit more random um, the reason for that is because it's you know it's chipped it's it's been you know shaped by weather um, by elements and things so um, it's got many different levels so by putting in those those uh, random white spaces you get that effect um, so I go in and I, I have a lot of fun with it um, there are some areas where I, I mentioned before that I put in this little ink blob and that's just kind of show like a, a little chip inside the, the rock you know it's, it helps the the texture and Brett Booth has already added in a few of those um, by adding in these lines that are up on top of the white space and those lines show uh, like a crack in the rock or that there's you know a chip inside the rock and things like that and I, I just took it a step a little further and added different shapes than just that straight line As you can see in, in the texture here in the closer view, um, as I, I will zoom in a little bit closer to line work, give you a better idea of uh, what uh, the you know, example that I'm trying to explain. And then of course you can see the, the rest of the line work with the, uh, the characters and stuff, but the main focus here is the, is the rock texture and, and using the 108. And uh, you don't have to use the 108. You can go in with a brush and, and create the same type of effect that you want with the brush. It's going to give you a bit of a different look to it. Um, it's going to give you a little more wider lines. You can still create angular lines with it depending on the position that you place your brush. I like to play, place my brush a bit on its side at an angle. I, I generally ink the same way with most of the tools. Um, I ink with the brush on its side at an angle and I throw a lot of lines towards myself. Um, with the brush you can push the lines away from yourself and uh, get a bit more of a straighter line if you wanted to. I, I generally like to do um, the line towards myself to create these little angular lines for the rocks. Um, and you may notice that uh, my style of throwing uh, lines with the nib is a bit unorthodox. It's, uh, it's different. It's something that works for me. I use it like a seismograph. I, I throw it from uh, my right side down to my left side, but I put it at, on its side and I'm actually using it kind of like a seismograph at its side, you know, kind of what you would see like in a EKG machine or something. I, um, I don't know if that's even correct, but, um, you know, throw the, the lines kind of like what you see in the, the liar detector test or something on television, you know, and, uh, throw the lines from side to side and that's really my style uh, of throwing a line and it works for me I'm able to control the nib that way um, you may actually find that pushing the line away from yourself may be easier 
Uh, for some of you, it's going to be pulling the line towards you, but it's whatever gives you the best effect um, and gives you the most control because that's what's important. What's important is how you enhance the artwork with your line work. Um, and so when I received this piece in Red Booth, one of the things that I do want to note is that I, I look at the artwork um, and uh, stared at the artwork for about 15, 20 minutes and just, it just absorbed all of the line, all the different shapes, um, where he spotted his blacks. And, and I try to visualize in my mind's eye where I was going to lay ink and what kind of style I wanted to put down for ink. I didn't really just go into it blindly. I, I did um, have a plan before I actually started and um, a rough plan. Uh, it's, you know, just a, uh, an, an outline and uh, created, you know, um, a visual image in my mind's eye of how I was going to ink it, what it would look like when it was finished. Once I had that in my mind's eye, then really all I had to do is then just be that seismograph, just be an inkjet printer and my hand would then just follow the image that was in my mind. And so I knew right away that uh, I was going to ink those rocks with a 108 uh, because I'm familiar with what I can do with the 108 tool. I knew that I could be quicker and faster by, and filling in these black spots. And, and you'll notice that when you, when you lay down black ink and you, you fill in the black area with the 108, it fills in much faster and, and it does release a lot more ink than the 102. But when it dries, it looks really nice and solid black. It doesn't have all those little rough cuts in the paper that you do have from the 102 it, it looks a bit smoother once once it dries but uh, when it's wet you just you do have to be careful depending on the type of ink that you're using uh, because if you're laying down more ink then it's going to take longer to dry if you're curious about the board that i'm using the art board that i'm using is from eon productions um, i believe it's the big two is the series and uh, Brett Thompson is the owner of Eon and was nice enough to send me out uh, a huge pack of sheets of paper and and to be honest that's really all I want to ink on now it's it's wonderful paper and and um, I did receive paper for free uh, to review the paper but uh, to be honest I, I honestly like the paper and uh, really do enjoy inking with it uh, the type of ink that I'm using um, dries fairly quickly I'm using the universal ink from a uh, repeatograph it's uh, i'm sorry it's the universal ink from coronor but it's the ink that goes into the repeatograph technical pens from coronor and i'm using the universal um, there is a a different type of ink um, that uh, you can use and uh, from uh, coronor it comes in a smaller uh, bottle where i believe i'm using the eight ounce and i believe there's it's one that comes in like a 0.4 or something. It's a much smaller bottle, and it's it's uh, not the universal. And um, I was actually told by um, Scott Williams when I, I got to talk to him for uh, a short time, he, he prefers that uh, the ink from the smaller bottles. And um, right now I'm drawing a blank, <laughs> but you can Google it and take a look at the different types. Uh, and there's one that's for specifically for film. Um, if you're inking on film, uh, you know, back in the day, I guess you would ink on a type of film and, uh, you know, for different, uh, art mediums. Well, again, uh, thank you so much for joining me, you know, on this video, uh, you know, go out there, try different, uh, tools, different, uh, techniques. And, uh, remember be different ink outside the box. And you can follow me on Twitter at Jimmy Reyes art. 